we're going to begin in the great tradition of Michael McClure with Chaucer. This is the kind of poem I called Writing Between the Lines. I'm going to be reading a passage from the Canterbury Tales. It's on the back of the t-shirts, and part of it is. And Adele's going to be reading my response to that passage. Chaucer and Meditation. Befell that in that season on a die, Longfellow called you. In Southwark at the tavern as he lie, the poet of the dawn, ready to wend and on me pilgrimage, I on the brink, to Canterbury with full devout courage, a full atheistic old age. At nicht was come into that hostelry, come at nightfall now, well neen and twenty in a company, in a company of spirits, a sundry fuck by aventure fala, made live by language, in fellowship and Pilgrims were they all, uh, and pilgrims are they all that toward Canterbury wold and read, uh, that toward the cathedral of right usage, the chambers and the stables were in weed, uh, and the light of spiritual adventure, and well we were nursed at a best, ask luck in their loneness, and shortly when the sun was to rest, and pride in the ancient vocation, so had he spoken with him every chon. Now offer these words to deafening time. That he was of your fellowship anon. In momentary fellowship. And marda forward early for Teresa. With all who hold to the sweet delusion, which may nonetheless be true. To talk our way there as a you devisa. That language, their language, will make them free. Live. Click. Save. Chorus, cancer. The beautiful young woman has contracted cancer. The young man will die of it soon. This child has cancer. This middle-aged man has cancer. Cancer is fully democratic in its destructive impulses. It is willing to kill anyone. You or I can get it. Even if we do not smoke cigarettes. Even if we try to take care of ourselves with exercise and good diet. Some cancers can. Be cured, others can. Not. In the past few weeks, I have heard of two people, two friends who have pancreatic cancer. Incurable. The friends are of different ages. Cancer kills anyone. Cancer is willing to consider death at any time in any circumstance. The brilliant poet can die of cancer. The great musician can die of cancer. The dull uncle who bores everyone at wedding receptions can die of cancer. You can die of it. I can die of it. Timor mortis conturbat me. Cancer is furious if you try to ignore it. Cancer insists on your full and respectful attention. Cancer is a mad magazine to which everyone submits. Cancer is a tune you can't get rid of. Cancer is full of the love of everyone it touches. Loves you to death. Some cancers can. Be cured, others can. Not. Can. Not. The beautiful young woman has contracted cancer. The beautiful the young, young woman has contracted cancer. This child the young man will die of it soon. This, middle-aged man this has child cancer. has cancer. cancer this middle-aged man has cancer. Impulses. Cancer is it fully is democratic in its destructive impulses. Can get it. it is even willing to kill anyone. You or I can get it. Even if we do not smoke cigarettes. Even if we try to take care of ourselves with exercise and good diet. Some cancers can be cured. Others can not. Of two people, in the past two, two weeks, friends I have, have heard of two people, two friends who have pancreatic cancer, the friends are of different incurable, ages. Cancer the friends are of different anyone. ages, cancer, cancer is kills to anyone, at any time cancer is willing to consider death at any time and any circumstances, the, the brilliant poet can, can die of cancer, the great musician can die of cancer, the dull uncle who bores everyone at wedding receptions can die of cancer, you can die of it, I can die of it. Timor mortis conturbat me. Cancer is furious if you try to ignore it. Cancer insists on your full and respectful attention. Cancer is a magazine to which everyone submits. Cancer is a tune you can't get rid of. Cancer is full of the love of everyone it touches. Some cancers can be cured, others can not. Some cancers can be cured, others can not. Can not. This is particularly for uh, John Norton. <laughs> what does it mean to be Irish? Or more specifically, what does it mean to be Irish-American? 
to get from my house to Cornell University, where I was a freshman in 1958, you drove up the hypotenuse of a right triangle. My father, who had been born in New York State farm country in 1895, and who grew up with the automobile, drove up the two sides of the triangle, thinking they were the hypotenuse. He never quite trusted that machine to get him where he wanted to go. And before any trip of consequence, he would fortify himself with a few drops of the crather. As we neared Cornell, there were several small towns which regularly made money at this time of year by giving tickets to students blazing through them on their way back to school. My father never blazed anywhere, but he did accidentally turn left through a red light as we slowly made our way to a goal. Suddenly, a motorcycle policeman was upon us. The policeman said, and I don't exaggerate his brogue. Who? Where are you going? My father pulled over to the side of the road and said very politely, Gee, officer, did I go through that red light? I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Say, he said, are you Irish? The policeman flushed and said rather testily, Well, I'm Irish, what of it? Well, said my father, we are Irish too. Meet the boy. We're taking him up to his freshman year at Cornell University. My mother, who was Italian, said not a word. By the time the conversation between my father and the policeman was over, there was no longer any suggestion of a ticket. The policeman was inviting us to his home for coffee and to meet, meet the, the wife. wife. My father politely declined and said he would drop, drop by on his, his way, way back. back. I have no idea whether my father even knew the name of the town whose laws he was violating, and I certainly do not. But when he heard that accent, he knew exactly how to behave. He acknowledged the policeman's authority. Gee, officer, did I go through that red light? I'm sorry, I won't do it again. But he then invoked a higher authority. Are you Irish? There was a joke my father liked to tell, and perhaps its moral figured in that Irish cop's reaction to us. The Irish maid is about to leave for the day when the master says to her, Mary, this is terrible. Look at the dust on this table. I can write my name in the dust. Oh, sir! She says, misunderstanding. Ain't education grand? Perhaps the thought of education, and particularly Education for the Irish was grand for that Irish cop, too. Meet the boy, said my father proudly. We're taking him up to his freshman year at Cornell University. What does it mean to be Irish? What does it mean to be Irish-American? <laughs>